first region we are covering today is Provence. Provence is very famous all over the world. It is the, the region of, uh, of, uh, of holidays in France, where the Côte d'Azur is. We all know Provence for the perfumes, for the herbs, uh, for the beautiful sceneries, the, the small villages. But we also know Provence for mainly one thing in terms of analogy is the Rosé de Provence, the Côte de Provence Rosé. Uh, the, the majority of the production in Provence, uh, and especially also for export, is uh, made of Rosé wines. The, the region of Provence has also, in this case, an interesting history. For many centuries, Provence was an independent county. Uh, then, in 1486, so relatively late, became a part of the Kingdom of France. But as Occitanie, as Languedoc, as Roussillon, especially until the French Revolution, it uh, kept a very strong identity. And this identity, we can see it also with the poems of uh, an important and uh, possibly the most important uh, um, Provencal author and, and, uh, and poet, Frédéric Mistral, who received a Nobel Prize in the 20th century for revitalizing and rediscovering the Provencal language. So we have here an area that is extremely beautiful, but has a strong past as well and a strong culture. The fact is that in Aussee we have, in Aussee Côte de Provence, we have 27,000 hectares. It's interesting to see also the 32% of the production is now organic. About seven, eight years ago, it was only, uh, only, it was already not bad, but it was 24%. Therefore, we have a trend, uh, an important trend of increasing the organic production. The production is about 1.2 million hectoliters per year. And as you can see on the chart, 90% is rosé. 4% is white, white and 6% is red. The red, red wines in Provence are extremely good, but extremely a rare find. And we have three, I would say, as Côte de Provence. So we have Côte de Provence that we have to see then in the next slide. We have Coteau d'Aix en Provence. We have Coteau Varrois en Provence. And then we have four. I forgot to put one on the slide. We have four extremely local, uh, I would say, uh, I would say Bandol. Bandol, I'll say Cassis from Cassis, I'll say Palette, where we have the famous Chateau Simon, and I'll say Belle, uh, whose vineyards are uh, around Nice, Nizza. As Côte de Provence, what is very interesting is that, of course, we have is the, the broadest, I'll say, in, uh, in Provence, but then we have five additional terroir designations that are. Uh, given a more, more limitation to the local vineyards. So we have Frajus, La Lande, Sainte-Victoire, Pierrefeu and Notre-Dame-des-Anges. Generally, in Provence, the soils are uh, uh, clay limestone. Then in some areas like La Lande or the area around Saint-Tropez, we have more uh, schist and granite soils richer soils in terms of minerality. Maybe less productive, but where the wines are becoming even more interesting. And the grape varieties that we find in, uh, uh, in Provence are for the white varieties, we have a Roll, which is Vermentino, Uni Blanc, Trebbiano Toscano, then Grenache Blanc, Bobolinque, Semillon and Claret. And for the red, we have again, like in the other uh, languedoc Roussillon area, Signara, Grenache Noir, Mourvedre, saint -So, and so on. There is one thing that I want to tell you about, again, about Vermentino, Trebbiano, Toscano, uh, or as we said before, about Carignan uh, or Grenache. Most of the times we have today the tendency to say that the grape varieties are national, but if you ask to a plant which nationality do you have, a plant is not able to tell you which nationality you have. And the uh, diffusion of grape varieties 
was mainly to, due to the movements of farmers or fishermen in the, in the area. So when a fisherman, let's say before the, the French Revolution, had no passport but had a small cabin in a small island just facing, facing the coast of its mainland, was bringing wine to his uh, uh, cabin on the other side of the, of the sea. So it didn't know which grape variety it had, or it, has, it had this grape variety had a local name, but it had the local diffusion uh, of this grape variety. Therefore, Vermentino or Roll, as it's called in Provence, in this case, we have Vermentino in, uh, in Tuscany, we have Vermentino in Liguria, we have Vermentino in Corsica, we have Vermentino in Sardinia, we have a whole Vermentino in, uh, in Provence, or Grenache, Garnacha, uh, Cannonau in Italy, so uh, we have it again in these same areas. And Trabbiano Toscano, we have it in Tuscany, we have it a bit in Liguria, we have it a bit in uh, Sardinia, we have it a lot in France, because Trabbiano Toscano, when the vines are young, are extremely productive, and the four, Uni Blanc, is the mostly planted grape variety for Cognac, because a neutral grape variety. So we, what I want to say, it's the last message that I want to give you with this presentation is that the administration of wine production is, of course, national. But the grape varieties, possibly most of the times, are not national. They are relating and connected to cultures that in, in the centuries and also in a millennia, possibly, uh, were communicating with each other. And this is the extreme point, an important point that we can see with, this, with these three regions. That we, frontiers are there when we, where we need them, but vines, they don't know them. So, thanks a lot for your attention and have a great day. Mm -hmm.